Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation for integer solutions. We have square root of x minus 1 over 5 plus the square root of y minus 1 over 5 equals square root of 5. And we're going to be looking for integer values of x and y. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator inside the radicals first. So we get, if we write the x as 5x over 5, we get 5x minus 1 all over 5 inside the radical and the second one is just going to be similar and then this is equal to square root of 5 notice that we have the square root of a quotient so we can basically write it as a quotient of two square roots in other words we can write this as square root of 5x minus 1 divided by square root of 5 plus the square root of 5y minus 1 divided by the square root of 5 and that is equal to square root of 5 again a lot of square root of fives now since we have two fractions with the same denominator and they're being added we can just add the numerators that gives us the square root of 5x minus 1 plus the square root of 5y minus 1 all over square root of 5 equals the square root of 5 again now at this point it makes sense to cross multiply and isolate the radicals on the left hand side. So this gives us the square root of 5x minus 1 plus the square root of 5y minus 1 equals square root of 5 multiplied by itself and that is going to equal a positive 5. Great, so now remember x and y are integers and you have them inside the radicals. So that gives us uh, some restrictions, which is something we'll talk about. But if you're solving uh, a Diophantine equation, which is what this is, because we're, look working we're looking for integer solutions, then you also have to consider the domain. The radical or the square root function is not going to be well defined if the radicant, the stuff inside, which is such a weird word, is less than zero. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to isolate one of these. So let's go ahead and just isolate the square root of 5y minus 1 and subtract the other one from 5. And what I'm going to be doing next is actually going to be very helpful. I'm going to square both sides. Obviously, at some point, you were probably expecting this, right? Squaring both sides is helpful if we're dealing with radicals. If you square both sides, you get 5y minus 1 equals. Now, this is a difference. So to be able to uh, square it, we have to use a formula, which is the square of a binomial, a minus b squared. That is a squared plus b squared, which is how I use it usually, minus 2ab, which is 10 times the square root of 5x minus 1. Now this can be simplified a little bit, but first of all, we can get rid of the negative 1 and then write our expression, you know, just like this. And one of the good things about after uh, canceling out the negative 1 is every term is divisible by 5, which is kind of nice, right? So we can go ahead and divide everything by 5, and this gives us y equals, let me try to align these, y equals 5 plus x minus 2 times the square root of 5x minus 1. So you can kind of see what I did there. All right, so this is our equation. So we were able to isolate y. Obviously, similarly, you could also do the exact same thing for x, but it doesn't matter because we have the symmetry. Now, one thing to keep in mind, we know that y is an integer, don't we? y is an integer, so the left-hand side is an integer, which means the right-hand side is also an integer. This whole thing must be an integer. We also know that x is an integer and 5 is an integer, right, hopefully. So the only thing that needs to be an integer is this guy over here, 2 times the square root of 5x minus 1. But 2 is an integer if... The radical, whatever the expression is, is an integer, then 2 times that will definitely be an integer, right? And obviously that could not be a fraction because if that is a fraction, now think about it. If the square root of 5x minus 1 is a fraction, then this is also going to be a fraction and from, from here x is not going to be an integer. So we got to have it as an integer. Anyways, so what do we get from here? Since the square root of 5x minus 1 is an integer, let's go ahead and set it equal to z. 
suppose z and z is an element of the big z which is the set of integers i don't know why they use z for set of integers there's probably an explanation maybe it's french i don't know just let me know if you do so we're going to square both sides and we're going to get 5x minus 1 equals z squared anytime we see a radical we want to square it right obviously so we have this requirement that 5x minus 1 needs to be the square of an integer. So that's important. But that's not the only thing we're going to look at. We're also going to be looking at something like this. 5x minus 1 is inside the radical. Therefore, it needs to be greater than or equal to 0. Remember, I already mentioned this before. This is a domain requirement. And from here, we're going to get x is greater than or equal to 1 fifth. So that gives us a bound, a lower bound for x, x must be greater than or equal to 1 over 5. Great. But that's not the only requirement we need. If you go back here, and remember the equation before we took the square of both sides, so that gives us, or that takes us back to, the square root of 5y minus 1 equals 5 minus the square root of 5x minus 1. Let's go ahead and start here. Now notice that, we have a radical on the left-hand side, so not only the stuff inside the radical must be greater than or equal to zero, but the result also needs to be greater than or equal to zero. Anytime you take the square root of a real number, which is non-negative, then the result is also defined as non-negative. We're not dealing with complex numbers here, right? So let's make sure. And this gives us another bound. So let's go ahead and put the radical on the right-hand side and flip side so we can see this stuff on the left hand side because it's kind of more natural for most people square root of 5x minus 1 is less than or equal to 5 square both sides you're going to get 5x minus 1 is less than or equal to 25 what am i getting at i'm getting at finding another interval for x and now we're going to put it together because they have to intersect right add one to both sides should be easy and then divide both sides by 5 what am i why am i writing 5 again i don't know and this gives us another interval. So x needs to be less than or equal to 26 over 5 and x needs to be greater than or equal to 1 over 5 which means x needs to be between 1 over 5 and 26 over 5. I mean if we did the exact same thing for y we would find the exact same interval. Wouldn't matter, doesn't matter, so I just picked x. Okay? Now what does this mean? Well and also remember that 5x minus 1 is equal to z squared. So this is what we ended up with. An inequality, an interval for x, and an equation for x that says 5x minus 1 needs to be a perfect square. Now, first of all, think about this. If x is on this interval, I can only use certain values of x, such as x can be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. x can't be 6 because that exceeds 26 over 5, which is why 5.2. So... Those are possible x values, but are they all going to work? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and plug in and find 5x minus 1 for each case. If x is 1, then 5x minus 1 is equal to 4. Is 4 a perfect square? That's the type of question you need to ask. And the answer is yes. If x is equal to 2, 5x minus 1 is equal to 9. Is 9 a perfect square? Yes. Check. If x is equal to 3, then 5x minus 1 is going to be 14. Is that a perfect square? Nope. If x is equal to 4, then 5x minus 1 is equal to 19. That's not a perfect square. And finally, if x is equal to 5, 5x minus 1 is equal to 24. And that is not a perfect square either. So we got two solutions for x. And guess what that means? We got the exact same solutions for y. But they just switch around. So when x is equal to 1, y becomes 2. When x is 2, y becomes 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.